Hey Zips fans, Chad Welker here with head men's basketball coach John Gross and first of all coach got to welcome you in uh, because we haven't seen you or heard from you in almost a month and a half and you know it's about time that uh, Zips Nation hears from the Mid-American Conference regular season champions and ultimately the uh, the, the team that would have went to the NCAA tournament had a uh, uh, anything been resolved with this uh, COVID-19 uh, issue? So, Coach, uh, welcome, and how are things going? And um, just briefly talk about the state of the program right now. Well, first of all, I just want to say thanks for having us on. It's great to see everybody again. It has been a little while, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, before we get into the state of our program, I do want to wish everybody safety and health, uh, continue to make good decisions, and you know, one of the things I would say that I've really appreciated is the, you know, courageous decision making of Governor DeWine and and uh, Amy Acton. And, you know, let's make sure we're listening and we're staying inside and we're following the guidelines because the, the sooner, the better we do that, Chad, obviously, the sooner that we'll have a chance to get back to some type of normalcy. And then certainly thoughts and prayers with those families that have been directly or indirectly affected by the virus. And um, certainly thinking about you and, and uh, hoping for healing and uh, comfort, courage, and peace for all of you. Uh, obviously, it's a trying time for everybody. And certainly when you talk about our basketball program, as I just stated, we fully recognize that there are much bigger fish to fry right now when it comes to the safety and health of, of, uh, of all of us. But um, doesn't mean that we uh, certainly don't care a great deal for what we do or how we do it or you know, or that we weren't, as I've told people, disappointed the way that our uh, season ended. So let, let's start there, obviously, and kind of put a cap of closure on how our season finished. I was really proud of our group. Uh, I thought, Chad, that we were playing about as well as we have played all year, winning eight of our last nine. I thought we'd really been blessed with a lot of adversity. I know that sounds counterintuitive. Um, viewing that as a blessing, but I really thought it had us galvanized and ready for tournament play and what it was going to take to advance in tournament play, whether that's, you know, Cheese, unfortunately, not being able to play in the game at Buffalo, you know, whether that's Christian Jackson fouling out uh, with a double-digit deficit at home against Ohio with nine minutes to go and finding a way to win, you know, whether that's the electric unbelievable crowd and atmosphere on national television the night we had uh, when we played Kent and had Romeo's jersey uh, honored that night. You know, that was a great night and just really was quite honestly a March environment, March Madness type environment in our building uh, on that Friday night. So I thought, uh, you know, the accumulation of all those things that we have been through throughout the 31 games and in particular, those adverse situations and pressure situations that we had to operate in late really had us prepared well for a great tournament run, uh, not only in Cleveland, but, you know, obviously if we were uh, fortunate enough even beyond that. So, you know, that part was disappointing for sure. But I tell people the most disappointing part, you just mentioned this is the first time, right, that you've heard from us, um, is uh, the fact that it just ended so abruptly, Chad. You know, the uh, fact that this team certainly deserved and typically would have had a, a banquet honoring their championship and accomplishments or even a team meeting uh, or a, a dinner at my house or, you know, something of that nature, Chad, where you can bring some type of closure. You know, it just ended so abruptly with, you know, especially with the NCAA tournament news after the MAC tournament was canceled. You know, we didn't get the NCAA tournament news until, you know, we were halfway down the interstate back to Akron from Cleveland. So we had several guys with their families uh, still in Cleveland and several guys on the bus. And, you know, from the time this thing hit real heavy, which was right at the time of the cancellation of the tournament, we really didn't have an opportunity for closure. Now, obviously, we've had an opportunity to Zoom and FaceTime and text and call, but in terms of an official closure to what we did, I think that was the hardest part, uh, especially when you're talking about a team that was as special as, you know, Team 119 was. Uh, from a leadership perspective, chemistry, 
intelligence, uh, the way they conducted themselves, how connected they were. It really was a special team that certainly I enjoyed coaching. Uh, I'm proud of, you know, what they, you know, what they accomplished. I'll, I'll kind of bring closure to Team 119, and if it's okay with you, we'll shift to Team 120 here in a second. But, you know, the last thing I'll share about Team 119, and I won't mention names, but I had, you know, as you're calling and checking on parents and our kids during this COVID-19, you could have a lot of conversations. And I thought that, you know, one of the really uh, neat conversations that I had, I actually had two of them, were with freshman parents that talked about um, how much, you know, their son or sons in this case really appreciated, respected, and enjoyed our seniors and what they, what they meant to our program. Now, that's really unique that someone or multiple people in this case would say that unsolicited. I mean, you don't hear that all the time. And that's really a tribute not only to the seniors, and what they meant to our program and the legacy they left in our locker room in terms of the foundation that they built. But I also think it speaks pretty highly of our young guys and the fact that they were bought in and, you know, cared about something bigger than themselves. So, you know, obviously you want to try to have that in place every season, right? You want that type of chemistry and respect and amongst teammates and happiness for guys' success amongst teammates and, we had that. Uh, that's what made the group special. We're looking forward to building on that. And I'm glad that our senior class was really able to teach and help uh, the underclassmen see that so that now you hope, you, you know, that Tony Dungy term or phrase regenerative leadership, you hope that, you know, those guys saw that, felt that. And now as they get older, you know, they start to pass the torch to the next set of incomers. Uh, the guys that are incoming uh, new players. So we, you know, that's how you build a program. So, you know, with, with that, you know, I'll, you know, kind of put the put the stamp there and the closure on Team One Nineteen. It was really a special group, and it was a heck of a ride that they took all of us on. The one thing uh, I did want to ask as well, Coach, is with those five seniors, um, could you share a memory you have with each of those guys? Uh, because you've said multiple times over the course of the year how special this group was. But from an individual, um, do you have a story about each one? We tried to do that courtside talk a couple uh, that week, senior week. Yeah. And we only were able to get two of those guys to be able to talk. So just real briefly, uh, those five guys, uh, special mem moment uh, that you had with them just on that individual basis. Well, I think, you know, maybe the best way to address it is just, you know, when I – think of them uh, as a uh, person and players, you know, what, what comes to mind, you know, for each guy, you know, for, uh, we'll start with, you know, we'll try to go alphabetical order here, but uh, Banks, you know, when I think of channel, I think of a guy that from a basketball perspective, just great teammate, extremely tough. I think the respect level he had in our league and from his teammates, in terms of how he defended and the number of times, Chad, we all saw it. You were there where he took charges and dove on loose balls and, you know, blocked out guys very physically that were a hundred pounds heavier than him. Like his ability to, I'll never forget his ability to put his body in place. And that takes tremendous sacrifice, you know, and obviously his ability to shoot the basketball, you know, we'll certainly remember that. And, but the teammate that he was and that every day when I coached him, you know, I knew he was going to bring it every day. It was never, you know, hey, today he would have it dialed down and the next day dialed up. I mean, he, you know, he gave you his best effort and his body and, you know, every day. And so I always appreciate that certainly about him. And then, you know, obviously the maturing that he's done, as he mentioned in that, piece and we've openly discussed as a as a father you know and how that's made him grow up and uh, even faster than what would normally be the case for, for a college student and watching him evolve in that role I'll always be proud of him for that you know Tyler you know when I think about Tyler I think about the maturity and I mentioned this a lot in the media and I wasn't just talking about it as a player you know more from a mental standpoint than than anything else I thought he was 
much more consistent in both, you know, off the court and on the court performance um, in his second year. He just grew so much. I thought he, his mental toughness really grew. And he and I have talked about it. I think that's what allowed him to be much more consistent as a person, as a student, as a player. And uh, he really grew up, you know, grew up a lot in that regard. Obviously had a heck of a year uh, for us. Very similar to Channel, who put his body in plays and was physical and competitive and, you know, obviously really talented offensively from a basketball, you know, perspective. Um, Markwell McIntyre, you know, obviously the thing I'm going to remember the most about him is just his unbelievable servant's attitude and heart, just the way he was as a teammate from the moment I took the job in the spring of 2017 you know, all the way uh, through to the, you know, unfortunate conclusion to this season. Just, you know, same thing uh, as I mentioned with Banks. You always knew Q was always going to be in a good mood. He was always going to be about the team. Um, he was – oh, he would do – he was so unselfish. He would do anything uh, above him, below him. It didn't matter. Whatever, whatever we needed him to do on a daily basis to help our team, he did it with such a servant's heart. And, you know, I'll never forget that, certainly about him amongst uh, other things as well. You know, Dang Riak, um, I think about him, I just think about how wise and smart he was on the court. Um, you know, people, I hope they, sometimes I wonder, I had a guy like that at Illinois named Nana Egwu, and I think sometimes people like to highlight or talk about maybe the things that they wish they, they wish this guy could do this better or that better. But um, the things he did helped us win. Um, and, and if you're a basketball guy and you watch, you can appreciate that. But if you're someone that might be a novice, you might not as much. Uh, the number of screens that he set to get our guys open, um, the pride he took in that. And then defensively, he was the anchor two years back to back of the number one defense in the league. And then this past year, the number three defense in the league. And you know, he covered up a multitude of sins that we would commit <laughs> defensively. And uh, he was really our anchor back there. He was, he could see things. He was really smart. And, um, you know, we're certainly going to gonna miss that and have to, you don't necessarily replace a guy with one person. You have to do it with a collection of people here. But uh, just great uh, teammate. And then uh, off the court, obviously, his ability to earn his degree early. Um, start his masters, you know, the way he conducted himself both on and off the court uh, just, you know, was terrific. And so really appreciated him, obviously, in, in, uh, in that regard and more. And then Zarius Williams, just everything he went through. I mean, he didn't play a whole lot due to the back issue at Dayton his last year. Then he sits out a full year the way he attacked the sit-out year to prepare himself to be at his best as a senior. And uh, the experience he brought to our locker room, um, Darius very intelligent, uh, the way he treated his teammates, and then obviously his production. I mean, you think about, you know, he and Willie Jackson were the two double-double machines in the mat this year. And um, every night he gave us rebounding. He was consistent with that. Um, you know, big shot making. Obviously the game winner against Eastern Michigan at home late and a big shot making in the last game on senior night against Kent, just made big shots and made big plays for us uh, all year. And, um, you know, loved his demeanor in the locker room and the way he just, the way he treated his teammates. So again, you know, special group. It was a privilege to be able to coach them and, uh, you know, looking forward to build upon, uh, building upon the foundation that those guys uh, helped us lay down culturally and uh, continuing certainly the trend in, in, uh, in that direction. So now with uh, everything that is happening right now, obviously it's a challenge to, for not only you guys uh, as coaches to, to not be able to get in those individual workouts. So what are you uh, and your coaching staff doing and sharing with uh, your, your athletes now that um, workouts that they may be doing or have to do? How are they finding ways to kind of stay in shape and, and really be ready to come back uh, with the same mentality that uh, they kind of left with? 
No, it's a great point, Chad. I think the first thing, the messaging that we're telling them is Team 120 hasn't done anything yet. Nothing. You know, as soon as you add or delete one player, your team is different. It's a new season. It's a new team. You know, just because we won the MAC championship, they aren't going to let us start the 2021 season with a head start, you know, two thirds of the way up the mountain. You know, that's not the way this works. So it starts with the mentality you're talking about that, hey, we're starting on the ground, ground floor, and we've got to work and get to work and we got to get better. Now, obviously, the environment we're in right now, as you mentioned, makes that more challenging. You know, we've missed uh, at, uh, spring training camp with the potential of missing summer training camp. And, um, you know, we have to be creative. Uh, I think the biggest thing we're doing right now is trying to stay connected to our guys, whether that's through Zoom uh, team meetings, whether that's through individual FaceTime, text, calls, you know, whether that's myself. Uh, that also includes our staff and support staff, staying in touch with them. So number one, we're trying to be connected. Uh, our, our phrase is that we're scattered together. You know, that's our, that's our mantra. Um, and that even this virus, as we say in our locker room, you know, we have a culture where to get, you know, to get us to break apart, you're going to have to bring a bazooka in here. You know, so this is no different. Obviously, this is unprecedented, the challenges that we're dealing with. But regardless, we're going to stay together and allow it to cho choose or allow this to be something that unites us more uh, as a group. So that's number one. Then number two is academics. You know, I think what, you know, Zips Nation and people out there that will be watching this, you know, it's, it's challenging, obviously. You know, they're, you're remote learning. Uh, you're counting on Wi-Fi in some cases at some places for our players that they may not have that uh, just by snapping their fingers. Some do, some don't. And, um, you know, obviously they're making sure, we're trying to make sure that they're on top of that. Our academic team does a great job. Uh, Tara Buchanan's our academic coordinator, and she spearheads that area. Uh, but we want to make sure those guys finish strong uh, as we can, as we finish up our remote learning and online work for the spring semester, and then, you know, potentially even uh, with some of that this summer. So those are really the first two priorities. Third is is what you're alluding to about how we're going to get better. So just little things, uh, Chad. I've been trying to give them an assignment a week. Uh, some of it's been film. Uh, some of it's been uh, discussion points uh, that, have, that we've been uh, able to discuss as, as a group, which has been good. Um, you know, and then obviously from a strength and conditioning perspective, Tim Campbell heads that area up for us. Um, and he is, uh, you know, in touch with our guys. Uh, we've sent every player a jump rope and a band. And, um, you know, he's trying to at least give them some type of workout and communicate with them to the best of, of his ability to try to get them to do um, something uh, physically. Because you're right, whenever we do come back and we reach some type of normalcy, we certainly want to have a foundation of some type of conditioning so that we can grow our team and grow our players individually. We have a saying, you know, don't allow a lack of conditioning to inhibit uh, our team and your individual development. You know, and so it can if you're not in a reasonable amount of shape. Um, so, you know, obviously a lot of the guys, we've got 11 guys returning right now, excluding newcomers, uh, that would have been participating in the spring training camp. And most of those guys, Chad, they don't have access to a gym or, you know, a weight room. Or So we're trying to be as creative we, as we can within the resources they have, whether it's living rooms or, you know, hoping that the weather's out, outside is nice enough for them to, do something. It really depends on what climate they're in. Obviously, Lauren Christian Jackson's in a little bit more favorable climate right now, so he can, you know, get outside maybe a little bit more. Cameron Reese, same way in Oakland. And, um, but we're encouraging them to do something, that's for sure, to work their minds and their bodies and uh, use this time to try to get uh, better rather than using it as an excuse uh, as to why we're not. Want to touch base in a little bit of an introduction to our fans uh, watching today, uh, kind of the new faces that they may see about uh, about the men's basketball uh, team this upcoming year. Um, so, Coach, you can first all start off with the uh, guys who were um, sitting for transfer reasons or 
uh, redshirting them. Uh, however, you want to briefly talk about them, what they're going to uh, help uh, provide to the Zips basketball team. And then uh, just last week, we put out that uh, Jermaine Marshall is going to be coming to the University of Akron uh, for the 2021 campaign. What is he going to bring uh, to the Zips team that really keeps the uh, competition level up for some other guys uh, and, and obviously looking to compete and uh, win hopefully a back-to-back -back MAC championship? Yeah, no, yeah, that's, uh, you know, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, you add or delete a player, you know, your team becomes a different team. And, um, you know, first of all, I'll start with, because I've been getting a lot of people have been hitting me a lot about status on Lauren Christian Jackson. People saw him on video with a cast on, and uh, that cast has now been removed and has a soft cast on, and he's trending really well. We're obviously being really conservative uh, right now because we're in a pandemic. And we've got time to do so, but he's doing really, really well for those of you in Zips Nation that have uh, tried to reach out one way or another that want to have a, uh, an update on him. And then in terms of um, uh, newcomers, you know, obviously you talked about the guys sitting out. So we had Brian Trimble, who's a transfer from St. John's, and Macy Daly, a transfer from Iowa, sitting out this past year. You know, both of them are perimeter players, guards. Uh, and I think that... Um, you know, first of all, let's start a little bit like Zarius provided for us. Both those guys have played uh, at a high level at their two respective places previously. In fact, both of them have played in the NCAA tournament. So they're a little bit like X. Their experience level, um, I think, really uh, can be beneficial to our team and to our locker room because uh, their perspective and experiences. I love, you know, part of the reason when we recruit I really enjoyed blending in freshmen with, you know, uh, junior college transfers, four-year transfers, and blending our classes for class balance. Is you get a lot of different guys in there that have had a lot of different experiences, and it's uh, educational, so to speak, for our locker room, and I think gives us a broader perspective. So they're going to bring that first and foremost. Uh, from a basketball standpoint, both guys can really shoot the basketball at a really high level. Um, and obviously, anytime you've got shot making out there, Chad, that's not a bad thing, you know, so they can do that. I do think both of them uh, have learned our defense and gotten better with our defense, and they'll be able to contribute on that end as well. Uh, Macy at six foot six, in addition to his shooting, has an ability to play make and make guys better with the pass and handles the ball really well. He's really skilled. You know, Brian uh, handles the ball really well also, and is the elite level shooter and is able to make. Um, shots sometimes that you watch, you watch him in practice and probably not great shots for everybody, but for him, they are, you know, so he just, he really has a gift to be able to make uh, difficult shots and obviously has to balance that because we want him taking good shots, uh, but uh, is, is a high level shot maker, both guys very, very competitive. And, uh, you know, I, we had Trey Edwards sitting out that red shirted this year long athletic wing that can shoot the ball and make athletic plays. Um, so we got, we're adding him as well. And then certainly Scotty, Scotty Walter redshirted as well and has gotten stronger and become a better shooter. You know, so we've got, you know, those four guys that we're adding to the mix with the returnees that people are most familiar with. Um, you know, then you've got the group of guys we signed in the fall. You know, we signed, uh, uh, you know, uh, two guys in the fall that people are aware of with Garvin Clark, point guard out of Cleveland, and uh, Taylor Curry, transfer from Mott Community College via Wisconsin uh, on the, on, the uh, on our front court. And uh, both guys will continue to fit right in with what we're doing from a cultural perspective. And, you know, Garvin uh, is a playmaking guard that we think is going to be great on both sides of the ball. Uh, Taylor offers us a little bit different dimension with his scoring. Uh, he's very good in the low post. He has some skill set that allows him to play inside and out um, and, and should be a quick study and quick learner as well uh, once we get a chance to get everybody together. And then you mentioned Jermaine Marshall, you know, who we added here this spring. And Jermaine is extremely competitive, uh, plays with the motor and physicality and, and uh, toughness that a lot of our fans saw this past year with Cameron Reese, uh, that type of energy and athleticism and motor, uh, extremely intelligent player, very versatile, 
can play both inside and out, is a competitor and is a winner. Um, and once again, you know, those traits are things as we've certainly started to build our program and build our culture, have more time to recruit, and have started to recruit classes back to back to back that we value uh, at a high level just as much as we do their skill set and their overall raw athleticism. So Jermaine's a great fit for what we do. Couldn't be more excited, you know, having the opportunity to sign him here in the spring. The last question I have for you, Coach, is just, uh, you know, now that we've had this pandemic, uh, scheduling is probably one of the harder things to do right now. Obviously, we're not going to release any type of non-conference or conference information, but what has been the challenge in trying to, to figure out what scheduling is going to look like for the 2021 uh, season? Well, it's, it's very challenging, and there's a lot of variables at this point that have uh, quite honestly slowed down the freight train a little bit from us being aggressive and finishing it out. There's a lot of factors. And as you mentioned, from a league perspective and non-conference perspective, there's some things going on that I'm not able to share at this time publicly. But, you know, there's certainly a lot of variables uh, that have made it challenging, no different than the pandemic, to finish our schedule and put it together. But our goal always is within the parameters that we have to try to put a schedule together that prepares us for Mid-American Conference play, that fits our particular team, that challenges us uh, in different venues, that challenges us with different styles of play. And that's no different um, than what we're doing with this, this year's schedule. So, you know, hopefully we'll have it done sooner than later. It's probably going to be a little bit later than normal uh, due to the pandemic, uh, the challenges that that brings, uh, the variables that are involved right now. You know, as soon as we have a little bit more definitive direction, uh, whether it's conference or non-conference wise, you know, we're going to work very hard to you know, execute our overall philosophy and, and put a heck of a schedule together. Coach, again, appreciate the time uh, that you had to join me today and, uh, you know, hope the family's doing well, uh, schools wrapping up for, for all your kids. And uh, how are you uh, staying uh, kind of, busy with the kids uh, at home. And that's question one. And question two, are you watching the Last Dance documentary? <laughs> well, we're definitely staying busy with the kids at home. And my wife is, you know, an all-star. Uh, you know, so I'm working typically during the day, whether it's recruiting, scheduling, staying in contact with our seniors, our players, their families, um, you know, other people that certainly are, are so important to our program as well. and. Uh, you know, trying to make sure every day we're moving forward with what we're doing uh, inside our program while also balancing, you know, uh, family life. And one of the unique things, I think, or silver lining in the cloud, cl this cloud of the pandemic for me has been the ability to be able to spend more time with my family, with my kids, and um, in particular, and my wife. So it's been, that's been a blessing. I think we've grown closer as a family uh, through this, uh, which is really cool. Um, in terms of the last dance, yeah, we're watching it. Uh, we've taped it. We've actually watched it a couple times already. My boys love it. And uh, it's been a, uh, interesting to talk to them because you forget, like, my kids, Connor and Camden, they don't, you know, have that truest sense of the ultimate appreciation and understanding of how good the Bulls were during that time and obviously how dominant Michael Jordan was. You know, for them, it's LeBron, right? They know LeBron, right? Uh, they're 14 and 10 years old. Uh, they know Kobe a little bit because of how much I respected him and talked about him and they've read his books and, and uh, so they have a feel for him. But, you know, Jordan played at a time where if you're a 10 or 14 year old, you know, you hear about him uh, and how great he was as a competitor and player and winner, but you didn't get to see or feel that as much. I think what this last dance documentary has done is it's allowed people that maybe didn't get to experience that growing up like I did to experience it um, a little bit more sensationally than what they would have otherwise. So we've enjoyed it as a family. It's been, uh, it's been pretty cool. Now there's only been a couple episodes and there's so much more to learn. Um, I know for me, um, the whole reason I got into video board production and everything was the running of the bull intro video that they would play on NBC during the finals. Um, but pick out a moment uh, since, like you said, you kind of, you, I mean, you've been able to witness some greats um, 
you know, what's one of those moments of Michael Jordan's that you can uh, you can recall and uh, hopefully when they air it on The Last Dance, you be like, that's the moment I remember. Well, it's multiple, Chad, because you're right. From the intro to, you know, how they introduced him into the starting lineup. I mean, to the 63-point game, I told my uh, Connor the other day, I said, I actually remember watching that game with your – with." Uh, what would be your great grandmother who's since passed. I remember sitting in the living room watching it just jaw dropping. I remember the shot he made in 1982 when North Carolina beat Georgetown. I was watching that game live in the national championship. You know, I remember the shot he made against the Jazz, you know, to win the NBA finals. You know, I remember him playing what, what they call the flu game where he had the flu and this ridiculously high temperature and came out and played you know, had one of the best performances um, of his career. So, you know, too, too many to name, quite honestly. Um, you know, that was right during my era when I watched him. He, he probably, for me, I always loved college basketball. Chad, I always have. But if you say, when did you start to develop your affinity for the NBA game? It would have been, you know, even though we watched Magic and Larry growing up, uh, it really reached its height for me. When, uh, when Jordan started playing uh, in the NBA for the Bulls. Again, Coach, enjoy uh, the rest of the time uh, with your family while we await the news on when we can get back to the office. Can't wait to see you. And, uh, again, uh, fans, you can always keep up to date on the men's basketball program by following them on uh, Instagram and Twitter, ZipsMBB, or obviously going to our website, GoZips.com. Chad, welcome to the Zips Digital Network. Have a great rest of your day, great weekend, and as always, go Zips.